this morning has been a struggle <laughs> and I laugh even saying that because um, like I haven't even left my apartment but I got up when Danny got up to go to work so I've been I, I got up like it was before 9 it was like 8 8 30 it was like 8 I think and um, I stayed awake and I got my shower and I started getting ready because I knew that I wanted like to record some videos and uh, so I shower and everything shave I'm trying to make sure I'm staying on top of like the shaving because I could go into labor at any minute and I really just don't want to be a hairy beast and I don't want to have, be having to shave my legs like at the beginning of labor when I'm having contractions and like I just don't want that so anyways that nobody cares about oh and then I get out and I start getting ready and uh like I'm sitting doing my makeup and I'm noticing like I'm starting to get cramps and like numbness in my legs and I'm like I can't I have to go lay down to finish this so I finished my mascara laying down and I was gonna do uh like eyeshadow and stuff and like try and look put together but so I'm like laying down trying to get the cramps to go away and then I fall asleep until this was like this was like just before 12 that I laid down to try and help the cramps and then yeah it was just before 12 and then um I fall asleep until almost 2 I think it was like 1 30 and so uh I wake up and I have like a little something to eat, but here I am. <laughs> but I think that probably the next couple videos are the only ones I'm going to be able to do. Um, this one and one other um, that I'm going to do with my hospital bags. And actually, I don't know if I've ever addressed the lumps in the bed. Those are body pillows and what Danny refers to as my pregnancy pit. So that no matter which way I turn, I've got a pillow there and that has helped me tremendously. I bought a pregnancy pillow um, initially and it was just like regular, you know, old fashioned um, pillow material, which is not very comfortable at all. And so um, I returned it and then memory foam is like m my jam. Like I prefer memory foam. I haven't found anything better yet. Um, Danny bought a pillow that's like full of some kind of it's like it, it feels like beans it's really really heavy i don't know why he likes it but he likes it um i forget what it's made out of but anyways uh memory foam for me and they do take up a lot of the bed and i feel bad for danny i try and like keep them as close to my side as possible but i don't think that i would have survived without two body pillows on either side of me anyway those are the bags i'm taking to the hospital and those are going to be in the next video that i talk about what is in them but this one I want to talk about doctor's visits because I feel like people generally have an idea of like what happens at your doctor's visits but if you've never been through it you don't know everything at least I didn't so um, basically in the beginning you're going once a month until you get to two months before you're due and then you go twice a month and then a month before you're due you go every week and so that's the stage that I'm at is where I go every week so my first doctor's visit was at eight weeks around eight weeks and I thought and this might vary by doctor I'm sure it does it probably varies by doctor probably varies by where you're in the country if you're in other countries whatever but I live in Seattle so uh, my doctor um, when I called because I took three boxes of clear blue pregnancy tests which had two each so over a weekend, actually over a day, I took six and they were all positive, said pregnant. And I called the doctor and I was like, um, I've gotten positive pregnancy tests. What do I do? Do I come in? Because I thought that if you had positive pregnancy tests at home, that you would go in and have a blood test and they would confirm it at the office. But I was told that the, the tests that I took were reliable enough and I took six of them that I don't need to come in to have it confirmed that I am pregnant. So they scheduled my eight week ultrasound um, and we went to it when we got back because we went to visit Danny's dad and we went to Chicago around Christmas. So it was like, the I think, I don't know why I remember, it was the 28th. Um, 
when we came, you know, when we came back, we went and I, you know, have never been through this before. And I know that so many people have, um, uncomplicated pregnancies. I don't know the statistics on, you know, like first time moms who have uncomplicated pregnancies versus complicated pregnancies. And then thereafter, like I, I know it's different for everybody, but I don't know overall, like if it's what's more common, I guess for the amount of people in the world that we have, I guess uncomplicated pregnancies are more common. I don't know. Um, I wasn't really a part of any kind of group that was at risk. Like I, I'm 33. I was actually 32 when I found out that I was pregnant turned 33 this year. Um, <clears throat> and so I am healthy. I don't have like a big family history of anything, um, any abnormalities or diseases or anything like that, at least with regard to babies. So obviously my major fear was that there'd be nothing on the ultrasound. I was scared that there wouldn't be a heartbeat, but, um, at eight weeks, the baby's still an embryo. It's not considered a fetus yet. Um, and I was told that they would have to do like, I think it's called a transvaginal ultrasound. I wasn't told by the doctor, but I was just, my friend was telling me that that's what she had to do when she was so early on. And I think like that can happen. You can't have to have that. And I'm, I just hate people all up in my business. So I was like, oh, whatever, do what you gotta do. But they wound up, they just did like a regular ultrasound on my stomach and were, was able to see the embryo. And she was like, well, you're definitely pregnant because there was something there and it looked so tiny and it was an embryo, but like it was moving and you could see its heartbeat, which was crazy. Like it was moving its little whatever they have at that stage and a uh, strong heartbeat and all of that. So um, they also found a five centimeter cyst, fluid filled cyst on my left ovary. And um, I was like, what? Um, it's the only cyst they found on either side and they were like, um, it's non-cancerous. It's just there. Um, and they can go in their own and any, and a woman at any given amount of time could have multiple cysts on either side. They come and go, they could rupture, they could twist, but, um, it's actually really common. My sister actually has, I know that she's had cysts before that have gone away on their own, um, caused her pain when she had them. Um, so they took, uh, blood samples and urine samples just to kind of get a baseline at this appointment, um, as well to kind of like figure out my blood type, make sure I didn't have any diseases, you know, all the, just to, to get a basic like workup of who I was on the inside. Um, and then I didn't meet with the OB that day. I talked to a physician's assistant who went over the ultrasound and everything. Um, one thing that I learned during that appointment was that I couldn't eat deli meat and I was like, well, I had like a wrap on my way to the airport from Chicago, but, um, I didn't know that you couldn't have deli meat. So, um, and you'll find like on these forums, women will talk about this stuff, like the things that they eat. One of the biggest things is like women that continue, like, uh, these, these forum posts are crazy. Like women will continue to smoke weed, cigarettes, al drink alcohol, things like that. Um, but women on the forums will talk about how like whatever, it's deli meat, it's fine. I never got sick from it. I still eat it. I still eat runny eggs, blah, 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 blah. I tried really hard to um, follow the things that I was supposed to do. So I, I didn't eat, I, I'm almost at the end of my pregnancy. I'll be 39 weeks on Sunday. Today's Tuesday. I didn't find it very hard to follow. Um, so I kept my caffeine below 200 milligrams, I'm pretty sure. Didn't need any deli meat, um, nothing raw, undercooked, anything like that. Um, which I'm typically not a fan of like raw or undercooked things that much anyway, so it wasn't really a sacrifice for me too much. Um, at the first appointment, we were there from 12.45 to 5 because you had to do the ultrasound, which took a while, I don't know, like maybe like an hour, 90 minutes or something. Um, and then you have to wait for it to be reviewed by a radiologist and then you meet with the physician's assistant, 
nurse practitioner, OB, whoever, to go over the results. And then of course, at the beginning of your appointments, when you go back to meet with the doctor or the nurse practitioner, um, you have to take your weight and blood pressure because they track that obviously. If it's high or low, <coughs> you could be at risk for certain complications. So that was the first visit. Um, the second visit, we did the 13 week ultrasound. And um, initially you're doing just, the first half of your pregnancy, you're doing so many tests um, just to kind of see how your baby is, if there's something going on. I wanted to do all the tests that there were available um, just for my peace of mind. Um, the thing that we did at the 13 week ultrasound was the nuchal translucency test. And basically at that stage, I think it's like sometime between 13 and 14 weeks, they're still, you can still see into their neck where they have fluid, back, the back of their neck and they measure it. And that could be a marker for Down syndrome if it measures a certain way. She, hers measured fine. Um, and then they also drew blood for the maternity 21 test, which I elected to do. Um, our insurance did cover it. I think that it varies by insurance, but the way to get it to cover it is that, um, well, I mean, it tests for abnormalities. So it tells you if in the blood, because I guess there's enough of, I don't know exactly how it all works, but I think that in your blood at that stage of pregnancy, that there's enough of a trace of fetal blood or something that they can detect the chromosomes. So they can find out if there's an abnormality there. And then a byproduct of that is um, you'll see if there's any Y chromosomes. So obviously if any Y chromosomes are present, then you're having a boy most likely. Those tests can be wrong, I, I, I learned, but they're rarely wrong. Um, and so we did that um, and then we actually, when we got the results, I wanted to tell Danny in a really cute way, but again, my plans were foiled because we were having this big uh, snowstorm in Seattle and we were home the day that um, they posted my results because now you have this like online chart and you can access it and that's how they communicate with you and it's really, really convenient and I like it a lot. Um, so posted on my chart, um, they were like all the technical stuff, you know, all their findings and then they're like, stop reading if you don't wanna find out the sex. And of course I wanted to. And um, so Danny, I was, I, when, when the email alert came through and it was, and I knew what it was, I was nervous because I'm like, okay, are her chromosomes all right? Or, or well, I know it's a her, okay. Are the chromosomes okay? Or, and what are we having? Initially, when I very, very, very first found out that I was pregnant, I just kept saying her. I just knew I was having a girl for whatever reason. That was my initial gut reaction. But then as time went on and I got closer to actually finding out what we were having, I started thinking that it was gonna be a boy because at least on um, my family and my, actually Danny's too. It's mostly girls. And my sister has a little girl. My parents had two girls. And I was like, well, it would be kind of cool if we had a boy because there's not really many boys in the family. Um, and then I started just getting really attached to the idea. Um, and so when the results came in, we were cooped up in the apartment, snowing outside couldn't go into work or anything, home for the day. And I was like, oh my God, the results are in. And I know that Danny's main thing was he just wanted to make sure that all the chromosomes were okay. So it came in, everything was normal. And then it said um, uh, at the bottom, when you continue to scroll down, if you wanted to find out, it said you're having a girl. And I was like, oh, a little girl. Like Danny didn't care either way. Me, like I said, I initially thought I was having a girl. I was sure, like as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was like, oh, she, 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 she. And then um, convinced myself I was gonna have a boy. And I wasn't, I don't wanna say that I was disappointed. I was just, it wasn't what I thought that I was having. So I was just like, okay. So now I know for sure. 
And then as my pregnancy went on and on and on, I started doing my research and buying things for her and, 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 and looking at names and everything. I started getting really excited to be a girl mom. Um, but truly, like Danny, I didn't care what we had. Um, but I think that you can mess with your head a little bit and get yourself in a mindset that you know what you're having and then you kind of start down that rabbit hole and then you find out, okay, actually the results are in and we're having this, this, you know, gender, then you kind of have to like rethink things in terms of what was already in your head. But really, I, I really would have been excited either way. Um, and so, but going back to the second visit, um, oh, but the way, what I was, in, so if I hadn't been snowed in, I was going to just like do something really simple and low key, just like I would have, um, if I had been able to tell him in a cute little way that I was pregnant, I was planning on going to Target or Carter's or somewhere like Bye Bye Baby. We've got some places um, in Tequila and pick out an outfit of a girl or a boy. And that would be what would have been my way of telling him what we were having. Cause I would have been at work and I would have gotten the email at work. I would have found out and he would have been at work. We wouldn't have been together. So I think that that would have been a fun way to tell him, but we were snowed in and anxious as hell anyways and just wanted to know. So we basically just like hovered around my phone and read the results together. So we we're a pretty low key couple anyways. I'm not about the big proclamations. I'm not really into that so much. I don't really care about that. Like we didn't do some big Facebook announcement or whatever when we found out that I was pregnant. Like we told all the people that were important to us who we felt needed to know that we wanted to know um, and that was pretty much it. And then like my, my friend was like, can I start, I just want to start like sending you things and saying things. And like, I just want to know if it's still a secret. And she basically made this announcement cause she was so excited about it and I didn't mind. And it was very sweet. And people were like, is this her announcement? And she's just like, yeah, cause she just doesn't care. <laughs> so that's how people on like Facebook found out. So during that appointment, that second visit for the 13 week ultrasound, I did find out that I have an anterior placenta, which means your placenta is in the front instead of the back of your uterus. And 50% of women are like that. So it's completely normal. Um, I was work. I, I had read that if you have an anterior placenta, it's harder to feel the baby. I've always felt her kick. So I never had that problem. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, So we, we checked on my cyst as well, and it had grown to seven centimeters, um, which at the time my baby was also seven centimeters. So my cyst and my baby at 13 weeks were the same size. Um, and then I had to do my first pelvic exam. Uh, Danny was sitting at the chair at the foot of the uh, exam bed. And I was like, you're gonna have to come up um, by my shoulders because my soul cannot have you see, you know, what I'm working with down there under the like the brightest light in the world. I mean, it is what it is and you do what you gotta do, but it's just like the, it, it is not fun being under a bright light and being examined, it's not. And I just didn't want him to see me like that. So I was like, bring it on up. Even at 13 weeks, I was so gassy that she, would, <laughs> she went up in there and I think she was checking because I told her that my Florida doctor told me that I would be too narrow to have a baby vaginally. Um, and she was like, oh, well, let's see what I think. So she was, she went up in there and she was just like, well, I mean, yeah, you're narrow, but I wouldn't say that you couldn't deliver vaginally. Then she went to go back up in there again to like, I guess, check out my ovaries or whatever. And I was like, wait a minute, so gassy. I almost farted on the doctor. The thing about pregnancy is like, there's so many things that are going on with your body that normally under normal circumstances would be humiliating. But when you're pregnant, you're like, I'm pregnant. Pregnancy is an excuse for everything. You're just like, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I can't help it, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I'll actually miss having the excuse that I'm pregnant. Cause I just feel like you can get away with a lot when you're pregnant and that's kind of fun. And it's nice to, I mean, it's just nice to have little perks like that because like 
you do go through a lot physically, emotionally, mentally, hormonally, everything. So it's like, yeah, I'll take a pass because I'm pregnant. So during the third visit, which was between 17 and 18 weeks, uh, we heard the heartbeat. The heartbeat for me has ranged between 130 and 160 um, at any given appointment, which is good. They say that it just needs to be above 120. Babies are smaller, they're growing. Um, they have a much faster heart rate than older people, adults, even probably children, older children. But, so that was good. Um, and then also at that appointment, we did another blood draw. I had so much blood drawn, I swear. Um, at those initial visits because the babies are developing and there's just like so much to check. Um, and that blood draw was to, to find out if there was any spinal defects with the baby. It was a second part to the maternity 21 test that did the chromosomal um, testing. This tested for any defects in the spine. Her spine was fine. Um, the fourth visit was the anatomy scan. So I was 20 weeks and they found that she was in the 50th percentile which is good because um, it's around the middle. It's a little bit above the middle, a little bit above average, but it's basically in that curve where she's, you know, average, which is good. Um, and my cyst had grown to 10 and a half centimeters. Uh, I was getting really worried about that. I'm like, is it gonna stop growing? Because the concerns with those are it could rupture, which if it ruptures, it's painful. If it twists, it can cut off blood supply to your ovary and your ovary could die, which that's scary. Um, or it could like shrink and go away. Um, on the ultrasound though, even though I, my, my, I guess my, my guess, I guess my guess, um, for when I got the results. No, it was at the 13 week ultrasound that I like got a vibe about her. So, um, backing up for like just a second. Um, when we had the 13 week ultrasound, the same day that I got my blood drawn for the maternity 21 test, I got confused for a second because I was like, I had written this down for the 20 week, but by the 20 week, I already knew what we were having. So at the 13 week ultrasound, um, she was just, the way that she was moving, I just got girl vibes, but I was like, well, that doesn't, the way she's moving doesn't mean anything. I just, that's crazy. But I did get girl vibes when I saw her on the ultrasound and it was so cute because I was laying there with my ankles crossed and in the ultrasound, she had her legs crossed at her ankles, which was really, really cute. Um, I'll always remember that. But back to the 20 week anatomy scan. Um, she pretty much the whole time since I could feel her move has moved a lot. Um, and I just, when I see her moving on an ultrasound, I feel like I can kind of get an idea of how her personality is. Um, and it just always made me so happy. And I, when I would be able to see her on the ultrasound, I could just stare at it all day. Um, those were really cool times when we were able to see her. It gives you peace of mind tremendously. Um, because especially your first time being pregnant, you just, you always wonder if everything's okay in there because you can hear about things going wrong and it's beyond your control. And when you can see that everything is okay, it really brings you, it brings you back down <laughs> from the worry that you feel. So at the next visit, which is like the fifth visit, I was around 24 weeks and they start doing the belly measurements and um, the regular weight and blood pressure, the belly measurements and the Doppler at each appointment just to monitor her. Um, how her heart is is beating, making sure that you're on track with everything, that your blood pressure is good, that she's growing okay. Um, and then at my 28 week appointment, that's the big one where you do the glucose testing. So um, I got the flat lemon line chilled drink and it really did just taste like a flat Sprite or a 7-Up. It wasn't terrible, but you do have to chug it in five minutes, which to some to some people, they'd be like five minutes to like drink a drink, whatever, that's no big deal. I'm a slow drinker and a slow eater, so that was kind of gross to have to just, you know, shoot it back. Um, and then within an hour after that, you have to get your blood drawn. 
uh, to make sure you passed and I passed it. Um, and then also at that appointment, um, because I have RH negative blood, I had to get a Rogam shot. I thought it was a shot in the arm. It was a shot in the ass. Ugh. Of course it is. And then actually the one that wound up really hurting was the Tdap shot. So it's like for tetanus, diphtheria, something, I don't know what the A is, but P is pertussis, which is whooping cough. So you get a shot for that. It's supposed to really help the baby, I guess, boost them and make sure that they don't get whooping cough. And I think after you're, they're born, they get a shot again. But um, I had had a tetanus shot in... 2017 um because we had these asshole roofers that took no care with where they threw all the roofing um tacks and i stepped on one and i had to take a tennis shot as a precaution i remember like it was my arm was in a lot of pain after i had that so i had similar effects with the tdap shot i had pain and swelling at the injection site extreme fatigue i think i took a nap that night um, sore throat, which I took Tylenol for, and diarrhea. That brings us to June, where I started having appointments twice a month. Um, and those were pretty standard. Just weight, blood pressure, measure the belly, listen to the baby's heart. Um, and then at 35 weeks, I had a doctor's appointment. Um, and the previous appointment I met, cause like sometimes you meet with your OB and you can only have so many appointments that you can meet with nurse practitioners or physician's assistants before you have to meet with your doctor. Um, you can't, you don't, you, the physician's assistants and the nurse practitioners are there to take some of the weight off the doctor. So you don't meet with the doctor every time, or at least I didn't. Um, so I had had a previous appointment with a nurse practitioner and she had measured my belly and said that it was like a centimeter or so behind. But I had noticed that where she started, cause like my doctor would start way low on my pelvis. Like, so I was thinking, okay, maybe I was measuring differently with her because they had different starting points because the, the nurse practitioner didn't start as low. So, I was just like, that's probably what it is. But then I did mention that to my doctor. And so she had measured me that, that appointment. Um, and she hadn't said anything. She normally doesn't say anything. She just like does a Doppler. Um, and then she measures my belly. I always have to ask, is she measuring? Okay. What's her heart rate today? You know, like I have to ask, she doesn't just tell me. And then I, uh, mentioned to her about the difference in measurement between how she measured and the nurse practitioner. And then she got out the tape again and measured. And she was like, well, you're like a little, like one or two centimeters. And she's like, we can do a growth scan and just make sure that the placenta is working okay. And the ultrasound basically like takes measurements. They're not exact. I mean, ultrasounds can be inaccurate with regard to due dates and, and size and weight and everything. So um, it's as accurate as it can be, but obviously like when the baby's born, a lot of times the ultrasound can be off. Um, but we, the very next week got, went in for the growth scan. Danny came with me. Danny came with me for all the initial appointments where I was doing like the blood tests and the um, ultrasounds and things like that. But with the routine stuff, with him just measuring my belly and taking my, the baby's heart rate and everything like that, I just told him like, if you want to come, you're always welcome to come. But like, he's the one that's working. And I'm like, you don't need to take time off work from that. But he did go with me to the, um, the growth scan. And so um, she measured every part of her and then basically like it calculates what percentile she's in. So it measured she was in the 62nd percentile, which is still a little bit above average, but basically in that curve of where she's average size baby. And they estimated that she was at six pounds at 35 weeks. So she was normal. Um, so basically my doctor said that I was just carrying her in a way that looked smaller or measure smaller on the outside, but inside she's doing fine and she's normal. The ultrasound technician mentioned my cyst, which I had completely forgotten about because we weren't monitoring it anymore. Um, but it had grown to 11 centimeters, but that was from, it had grown to 11 centimeters from 
20 weeks. So from 20 weeks to 35 weeks, it had grown a half a centimeter. So it hadn't grown significantly, which is good. Cause I was like, oh, this motherfucker is gonna be like fucking 15 centimeters. I don't fucking know. It's funny because when we went for the 20 week ultrasound appointment and we got her pictures, it looked like me. It looked like a profile of me. Um, and then at one point when they were doing the ultrasound and they did like, and uh, uh, you could see the front of her face, I thought it looked like me. But when we did the 35 week growth scan and they, they didn't print out the pictures for us anymore, they sent them to us um, via email and like we could have them digitally. And I posted, I think most of them on my Instagram at Heather Alexandra 1007. Um, so you can see a lot of them there, but on this one, she looked just like Danny, like her brow line, like his profile, it looked like him. Like Danny's got really, really long eyelashes. I don't, it looks like she's got long eyelashes. Um, had like his eyebrows and his nose because Danny's nose has like a little bump in it. Mine is really sloped. And so just the position of her nose in relation to like the angle to her forehead, it looked more like him at this one, which I don't care what she looks like. I mean, I'm super, super excited to see what she looks like. Um, but I, I, I hope she either looks just like one of us or she's a, a mixture of the two of us. Um, Danny and I look very, very different. Um, so a kid that's a mixture of the two of us, I don't know what that would look like. There's also redheads that run on the side of his family. For whatever reason, I just feel like I'm going to have a blue eyed baby with dark hair, but I'll, you know, love her regardless. She'll be beautiful no matter what. So at my 36 week appointment, um, at 36 weeks, I started having to give urine samples before I left the office. It could be when you get there, it could be at the end. Um, and then I had my first cervix check, which the cervix checks hurt like a motherfucker. She go, she went up in there and then it felt like she turned a corner. And I was like, I was like, stop, just stop. This hurts really fucking bad. But she was able to find that I was already uh, one and a half centimeters dilated. And she said that she was really low, that she could feel where the baby was. So um, you don't have to do, well, I mean, you don't have to do anything. But like, they don't recommend that you have to do a, cer a cervix check every time you can from 36 weeks on. I didn't do it at my appointment this past time because I'd done it at the appointment before. I don't know if I'm going to do it at my next appointment. Um, because it, it does hurt and I just, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. I mean, I'm going to go into labor when I go into labor. I don't necessarily need like a predictor of it. It's going to happen. And then obviously like when you go into labor or if you're late, they're going to have to check your cervix anyway. So I'm just kind of cool to like not have it checked, honestly. So I don't know what she's going to recommend. I'll do whatever she recommends. That's kind of been my mindset for the, for the pregnancy is like, look, Whatever's best for my baby, whatever's best for my health, whatever you recommend, I'm going to do. But if you're telling me it's elective and I don't need to do it, then I'm probably not going to do it, like, with regard to a cervix check. And I also had to do the um, Group B Streptococcus swab, where they just take a Q-tip, swab your vagina and your butthole, and find out if you're a carrier, which I found out that I am a carrier. Um, and I'm like, well, what the hell is this? Like, I don't know what this is. Is this an STD or what? And she's like, no, it's not an STD. It's basically bacteria in your intestines that can also be found on your vagina. Men can have it too. 25% of healthy women, I, I read, um, have it at any given time. One weird thing about it is you can test for it at one time, positive, and then another time if they swab you, you can be negative for it. So I guess that's why they swab at 36 to 37 weeks when you're closer to like the end of your pregnancy. Um, because all that does is lets them know that when you're in labor, you have to be treated with antibiotics. I think that she said that they use clindamycin. Um, and what it can do to the baby is when the baby comes out vaginally, I think that if you have a C-section, it's not something you have to worry about because it's like the, in the vaginal area. So your baby wouldn't come out of your vagina if you're having a C-section. But, um, 
I'm going to try and have a vaginal delivery. Obviously, there's no indication that I would have to have a C-section at this point. So, um, basically, if the baby comes in contact with it, you're not treated with antibiotics. The main concern is that they can get meningitis, but they can also get other respiratory issues. Um, but even, I guess, even if the baby comes in contact with it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to affect them, but it can make them really sick. So, um, and then they also had paperwork at this appointment where I had to sign for uh, a blood transfusion should I need it on the big day and a C-section if it's necessary. So obviously if the baby's in distress and I can't get her out, obviously I'm gonna have a C-section. I already turned in my pre-registration paperwork at an appointment or two before. So that just makes it easier for when I have to go in when I'm actually in labor. It's just less that you have to worry about when you're dealing with labor which makes it so much easier. So that was already done. And that's pretty much where I'm at basically. So um, 37 week appointment, it was normal. Um, just, I didn't uh, do the cervix check and I did my regular weight, blood pressure, measured my belly and um, heard her heart rate. Um, And then my next one is this Thursday, and then I have one the Thursday after that. And then I'll be due, so they'll be monitoring me um, and just making sure I don't go too far past my due date. I don't want to induce unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, I'm hoping that she'll come on her own. Um, it's been really, really cool kind of seeing how your body goes through pregnancy and it just knows what to do and with all the pain that I've been having and that I was already dilated at that one appointment where they did my cervix check um at 35 weeks 34 35 weeks whatever it was um I feel like is a good sign that she'll be on her way and she'll be on time I for whatever reason feel like she's going to be a week early I feel like she's going to come on the 39th week like that I'm going to go into labor on July 31st somewhere around there um, just because there's been a lot happening, uh, it feels like she's just getting ready and she's definitely ready to come. So pretty much it. I, I, I found the, the visits interesting. Um, I told Danny that it, it has felt like it's been a science experiment for me, um, going through pregnancy because I'd never been through it before and didn't know anything that I could expect. So, um... I really wanted to make sure that I wrote down key things that occurred at each appointment because um, maybe someone else will find it helpful if they've never been through it either. Um, every part of this experience has been very, very interesting to me and um, I'm happy to have gone through it. I'm grateful that everything's been good so far and I'm really excited to meet my baby and to um, you know, I don't want time to, to fast forward or anything like that, but these last few weeks are rough and you're very uncomfortable, but I'm very thankful that um, I haven't had to work the second half of my pregnancy so I can take it easy. A lot of women don't have that luxury and I feel for them. Um, but now, yeah, it's definitely the time when I have to like wind down and take it easy because um, if not, I definitely feel it physically. So yeah, I think I'm going to do my hospital bag video now. Um, I've probably forgotten things in it, but I think I have all the essentials. So hopefully I'll be prepared.